the kingdom of God describing us and it says as a massive tree that grows and all the fowls of the air um, please there's a reoccurring echo okay can you work on that all right so the fowls of the air uh, find uh, um, take shadow under the way under the, the branches of that particular kingdom institution so God wants to create institutions out of us that will be support structures for other people for people to be able to realize their own opportunities, their own goals, uh, their talents, their gifts in a proper environment that will facilitate that. I believe that's what will give greatest amount of joy to any person on this earth. Not just giving handouts to people, but creating an environment and a platform where other people will be able to find a proper expression for their own gifts and for their own talent. And when we make this the motive for us generating wealth, we are right in a sync with the creator of all things. And any declaration that is made, and I'm saying this consciously, and any thought that is expressed in line with that, cannot fall to the ground without it getting fulfilled on this earth. Let me repeat that words that proceed out of that intent, which means the intent is not materialism, but the knowledge of the fact that material things are part and parcel of or tools to be used to create this bigger ideal on the earth, any statement that is made with that intent cannot drop to the ground unfulfilled. In other words, whatever you say in line with that, you are speaking according to the spirit of love, who is God, and that those words will be full of life. Now this morning I want to get into something that really drove me into this, uh, the, the real burden that was on my heart about God enabling productive labor. And this is what I really want to get, I really saw in the spirit I wanted to get into. And I'll do that this week and next week. And I'll start with Second Peter chapter 1 and start reading from verse 4. Uh, verses 4 and 5. It says, Whereby are given unto us, that's God, has given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Massive promises he has given to us. They are exceeding great and precious. And he says, by these promises, we might be partakers of his divine nature. In other words, for these promises to be fulfilled in our lives, when they are fulfilled, we will literally partake of the divine nature of God in them being fulfilled. Uh, the mystery of godliness will be revealed. In other words, God will be made manifest in our flesh. It says, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. So we have been given exceeding great and precious promises that people want to get the manifestation of it into their lives, into their business, into the work of their hands, and work is spiritual and I don't think there is any place that the body of Christ has the opportunity to demonstrate God's glory in tangible ways outside of the marketplace because whatever we do in church it's our environment uh, it's an environment we control uh, we can say you know the spirit of God moved mightily uh, people can fall on the ground and roll but uh, an unbeliever may just not understand that and all our lingua and all our mannerism but there is one thing they will get and there is one thing they will respect a massive move of the spirit in the marketplace because that is level playing field 
We all know what the objectives are in that place. The goals are clearly defined. And every single person is involved there. And for someone to come into that place and have that move of the spirit will be like Jacob coming into Laban's house. And Laban said, I have learned by experience, since you're coming in, everything has been multiplied. It was a move of the Spirit in Joseph's life, such that Potiphar saw that the Lord was with him. It wasn't that he was rolling on the floor and doing all of that. He saw that everything he laid his hands on prospered. And the world, when you beat them in the marketplace... And show multiple, all right, uh, times, uh, or you show productivity in multiple times what they are capable of doing. They will accept the lordship of Jesus. History has proven that. That even in the days of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar, who put up an idol, when he saw productivity, he bowed down and said, your God is a true God. So this is the place God really wants his people to invade and uh, exceeding great and precious promises he has given to us that he wants to realize the there but where lies the problem next verse it says and beside this that is all these exceeding great and precious promises given all diligence give it all diligence then add it to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. And if there's anywhere Christians are missing it, it is here. In other words, Peter is suggesting strongly that faith is not alone, it's not enough. He said, given all diligence, you must add something to your faith. And he said, it is virtue. And to that virtue, you must add something. And it talked about knowledge. And we'll stop at those three this morning. So it says, give it all diligence. You want great and precious promises exceeding to be made manifest in your workplace, in the field in which you labor, your business, your career. Give it all diligence. Add to your faith virtue. And to virtue, knowledge. Now what's diligence? Diligence is devoted and painstaking work and application to accomplish an undertaking. In other words, it's devotion to what you are doing that shows itself in painstaking work and application of yourself to accomplish the undertaking. What does this painstaking work mean? It means work done by employing great care and thoroughness. In other words, you are devoted to your work. We can see great care in what you are doing and you are thorough about it. So be thorough means you cut no corners. Now don't forget, you are adding this So the faith that you are putting in for exceeding great and precious promises to be fulfilled in what you are doing with your hands. Such that you are in a place where you lend unto nations. That is one of the exceeding great and precious promises. You are the head and not the tail. Above only and never beneath. It says beside that, giving all diligence, let us see devotion to that work. Let's see there, painstaking work. In other words, devotion, all right, employing great care and being absolutely thorough. So a person who puts thoroughness to what they are doing is not cutting corners, will say if it's a straight line, it has to be a straight line. Someone says, well, let's just look at it. It doesn't really matter. People will not see that it's not actually straight. The person says, no. They are thorough about what they are doing. A straight line must be straight to us. Even though their eyes might miss it, we must do good work. Alright? And they take time 
through the irritation of other people. Now, why are you paying so much attention to this? Attention to dealing, detail, thorough work, checking through on every single thing. Things that people might even simply miss out or may never see for years. Uh, the place we use in Yerba, I was telling them this morning, there is an underground there. I've never been on for years. We were there until one day I went with the landlord and said, let me take you somewhere. And we walked right underneath the building up until we got to the road. Underneath. I said, you built. said, listen, this is how we used to build. We built with quality. We built, they were thorough about it. All right? Now you think about if people are not thorough, somebody is in charge of a plane. He's the engineer to check through on things before they fly. And he, he's not thorough about it. They hear his sound. He says, look, my friend, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Let, let, let them go. Let them go. Let them go. And you, and you hear and you're on the flight that the engineer said, let them go. He just said it. I mean, you said, listen, you want to put all of our lives at risk? And that's the kind of, of thinking and the kind of attitude you've got to have to work. In other words, painstaking work, great care is given to it. You are devoted to that work. It's a devotion. All right? And you are absolutely thorough. Other people may not know about the quality of, of time you put into it, the attention to detail. But this is something of integrity inside your heart. And we'll see the scripture is saying these things count for something when it comes to the fulfillment of God's promises for your own life. Now, in the gospel we get to this. We have created a prosperity message that doesn't have all these things that the word teaches should be involved. And it came from an erroneous teaching and it came from America. All right, when you read people that have really studied it, and it came out of when people really wanted to start having itinerant ministries outside the local church, they didn't want to be under you know local authority, and they will have these ministries and go on television, and they needed to finance those ministries, so they had to devise a way to finance those ministries without having a congregation that you know regularly just gave, and so they needed, and, and television was expensive and those things. And so what started happening was that they started devising things from the scriptures, taking scriptures out of context, and, and creating this, this spectacular thing when it comes to prosperity. We'll see this. Outside what is taught inside the Bible as the real ingredients for biblical prosperity there. And so people now start coming and, you know, people will, you know, everything now look like magic. But it says here, diligence is involved. Now to that, it says, add to your faith now virtue. Virtue here, the picture we're painting, is behavior that shows high moral standards. In other words, this person is devoted. This person does thorough work. This person pays attention to detail. Then this person demonstrates in their behavior high moral standards. Qualities such as honesty, being respectful to other people. Now think about a picture of somebody, all right here, going to work, very thorough about what they do, but they have high moral standards. They are honest in their dealings, they are respectful to other people, they are not rude, even the janitor or any lower person, they greet the person with respect. Uh, they, they're very smart. We'll see these intelligent people because they've added knowledge to this. But paint that picture here. Thorough. All right. Respectful, honest, courageous, forgiving. In other words, it can be a boss. You make certain mistakes. They easily forgive. All right. And about, and says they are kind hearted to people. And then to this, it says add knowledge. Now, knowledge here will therefore mean that individual understands that I've got to be highly informed on what I am doing. Uh, they, they are studious about it, acquire more knowledge. All right, that's what that word knowledge means there. And it's, uh, it's, it is skills that are acquired through education or learning. 
all right, or by experience or what we call apprenticeship. In other words, this person regularly upgrades their knowledge. So it says, to your faith, for the fulfillment of exceeding great and precious promises. It talks about diligence. It talks about adding to it high moral or right standards. And so that being a person of knowledge and a person all right, that develops skills in what they are doing. Now these things must be around faith if faith is going to work. The Bible says faith is dead being alone. If you live faith just by itself without all of these, faith dies. Faith cannot produce those things. Can't get a person because the Bible says, Seest thou a man that is diligent in his ways, he shall stand before kings. Faith will, alone will not be able to get him into those places. He needs, faith needs other things added onto it. So these things must be around and added to your faith in order for you to be fruitful. In other words, it takes more than faith alone. Faith has got to be there. And what do we mean by faith? You must be speaking what we call faith-filled words over and about your business and your career. We've said this. Uh, words are being spoken uh, into your business about these exceeding great and precious promises that God has given to you. So you look up over the business and you make pronouncements over it. You declare these things into it. Uh, you practice Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20. You know your words are seeds. And that your faith is a seed that you are planting into the earth. Jesus said to them, you couldn't get it out because of your unbelief. And he said, why is there unbelief? You don't understand that if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. All right, the mustard seed was the smallest of all the seeds. But Jesus wasn't referring to the size of your faith but to the nature and character of faith. In other words, it talks about the kingdom of God. It says it's like a grain of mustard seed. It says it's smaller than all the other seeds, but the power is revealed when it is sown. So it talks about planting it. So it's saying here, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, plant that faith into the earth. For things to come out in your future. And how do you do that? By saying. In other words, there are mountains in your industry, mountains in your career that you want to show, all right, and reveal uh, God on the inside of you, the divinity of God, through taking those mountains. So you've got to start speaking forth and declare that by the end of your career or in the next five years, God, he needs Faithful words, but to those words, add diligence. Speak powerfully about your future. It says there, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. So take all the limits off and begin to declare and say what will happen globally concerning your business. Plant your faith. Speak powerful words. All right. Lift up your eyes over and above what is going on in the temporal, the condition, and say powerful things that are going to come. If I know anything, I know, all right, that people who are so consumed with day-to-day -day things and never look up and over and speak powerful things. And, and let me say, say this here. I, I, I don't, I, if I give, if I, if I, if somebody has helped me in life, I, I will mention the name of the person. All right. I, and, I, and that's why mentorship is good because if when you say mentorship even have a role model in your field somebody you can look at and say I aspire to be like this person uh, so that you are not consumed by what is happening every single day I mean one day I was listening to somebody it was a football match against Manchester United and this team beat Manchester United and they asked them what was the strategy the coach said the most dangerous person in the Manchester United team is Bruno Frank um, what's his name Bruno Fernandez. He said, he must never look up in a match. If he looks up, you will be defeated. In other words, if you can look at the whole field, he knows where to put the ball, where he will split your defense. So whatever happens, surround him, so he's always thinking of beating this player before him, so he never looks up. And what happens to people is that they are trying to solve day-to-day -day problem, they never look up over their career, and years begin to go. 
So you've got to look up. Where will this end? When I was on campus doing campus fellowship, people were doing that and I looked up. And I saw that the only person that had come out of campus fellowship was doing something massive in the, in the country that was Reverend Christian Academy. And I said, listen, I want to be, I want to do that. And I understood that it didn't matter. If you didn't make me uh, uh, assistant head of this, it didn't matter. This is the game. The game is on the outside. It's not what we do here. And I remember a friend, you know, was doing all kind of thing, and I sat him down somewhere just uh, around Mary Hall. I said, listen, listen, this is what I am doing. 20 years from today, I will come back to this campus, and I will be still be relevant. They will know that I was in leadership. The way you are doing it, 20 years from today, they will never know you are in leadership. It's about, so you've got to, your career, you can't just, you know, be saying, oh, this boss is doing this, this boss is and you are consumed with, with, with what is happening in the immediate environment. You've got to look up and plant exceeding great and precious promises. And you do that by speaking words and declaring things. And so what happens here is, that's why Jesus said, look, seek ye first the kingdom, the kingdom of God, Mark 4, 26. He said, don't be consumed about what you will eat, what you will drink. Seek the kingdom and some people all their spiritual life, they are praying about what they will eat, what they will drink. You know, I'm not living in the right place. That's the prayer point. Leave all of that. Plan for the future. Plan powerful. If all you are doing is believing and putting out fires here, you will never create anything. It says, seek ye the kingdom. What's this kingdom? Mark 4, 26. The kingdom of God is as if a man should cast seed into the ground. And shall sleep and rise night and day, and the seed will spring forth and grow. He knoweth not how. So you plant these exceeding great and precious promises about your future, powerful words there. Now to those words you are speaking, powerful things about where you get to, are diligent. Be thorough about the work that you are doing now. Pay attention to details. Alright, don't try to learn the tricks of the trade. Understand the trade. Know what it's all about. First time I ever went to South Africa, I went and I was with, I went to see some, some folks. Well, well, it was actually, that's another story. All right. But I went and I, and I saw all the printers of South Africa. Let me just put it this way. And, and one of them showed me something. He said, we have a digital printer here. We can print digitally. This is manual. He said, but we train people in this place such that before you go to digital printing, you must be able to print manually close to what the digital thing will produce. He said, well, if I print manually for you and this digital thing prints and I put it together, you, all right, which you will call unlearned in that trade, will, will struggle to know the difference. They taught people the real trade. They taught them so that those things were there. All right? He says, to that, let there be high moral standards. All right, be punctual, be honest. Okay, it says this here, be respectful. No matter the progress you are making, forgiving, be kind. Uh, To this, it says, add, all right, what is called knowledge. So, let me read something that I got off World Bank study. And, And if you read anything that is true, it is true. All right, if you read it and you look at the Bible, you will know that all those things are in the Bible because they are true. That's why Jesus said, they said the kingdom of God, he said, look, just go outside. You see the woman who is trying to bake and she puts uh, uh, what you call yeast or puts a leaven into it and it blows. I said, that's how the kingdom of God is. It is all over. Now, this is what they did. And I want you to listen to this. Okay. Some years back, the World Bank Environmental Economics Department set out to make an assessment on the relative contributions of various kinds of capital to economic development. So they wanted to look at the various types of what we call capital and how they contribute to economic development. In fact, it's when I read this that I understood really a friend of mine who was a pastor, he's now in, in England, and he's doing a PhD and what they, what in this university, and I was wondering what, what, you know, but it's about how spirituality, and he's doing a doctorate on it, all right, contributes, all right, to entrepreneurship and, and the, the Pentecostal experience. I said, yeah, they took you into university for this? He said, yes, all right, and it's about spiritual, and he said, so it's just like taking Bible to the place, all right? So they wanted to find out, and it's a study 
on where, where really is the wealth of the nation. So they started out by measuring capital for the 21st century. They began by defining natural capital first. So you are looking at different types of capital. So the first one is natural capital. And that's the sum of non-renewable resources, including things like oil, natural gas, coal, mineral resources, cropland, pasture land, and forested area. Then the second kind of capital they looked at was what you call produced or built capital. All right? And it's what many of us think we need when we say we need capital. This is the second type. It's the sum of machinery, equipment, infrastructure, buildings, structures. So people say, well, I need to get capital, you know, uh, money from a bank. So, you know, I've got capital and then take the house and all of that and say, well, that's why I can't get money. But once the values of all these are added up, that's the produced or built capital plus the natural capital, they added everything up, the economists found something big was still missing. And what was still missing, the vast majority of the world's wealth was not in those two forms of capital. For they saw that if someone simply adds up the current value of a country's natural resources and produced or built capital, there is no way you can account for that country's level of income. The rest they found, and it's the greater majority, is a result of intangible factors, which is what you call intangible capital, such as trust among people. In other words, let me tell you this. When they say things like, like, um, add to it virtue, character, it's capital. Because if you are not an honest person, and, and people around you know not to be, you are, you are not a very truthful person, if you need money, they are going to be very locked down to give you money. And I keep saying this. Some people just come and say, you know, and it's revealing something. And sometimes in church people just use, you know, you, you know, what do we call it now? Christianese to dupe people. And, and, and Paul was trying to correct that and said, look, before you take a widow into number, first check about her children, about her nephew and nieces. Because sometimes when people need money and you look around them, you look at their classmates, you look at who their cousins are, you look at even where the brother or sister is, where they are, their uncles. How come those people cannot give you this money you need? The reason is the intangible capital is not there. They have watched that person over the last 10 years, ask for money, not pay back, lie on things, not be punctual, so they withdraw from giving that person resources. Uh, they have friends who could have stood and vouched for them and they could have gotten the capital, all right, the money, but because, all right, of their behavior, they move back. And people evaluate those things. That's why in, in some nations you call talk credit score in, to show that this person pays back their debt. I mean, we, I mean, we have classmates, we, we, we all have a WhatsApp group, all right, uh, but there are one or two people in the group that there's nothing in this world that can make me give them any money, except they are in hospital and I see them in hospital. Now, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. One of them has, this one person sent me a message once that he had an accident, his legs were broken, he couldn't walk. I knew he was not telling the truth. Nobody saw him with broken legs. The last time I gave him money, till today he has not, he told me, he said, he came to church and said, just give me, I need 20, this many years ago, 22,000. I will come back now. I'm walking on site. And it's a brilliant job. Walking on site, when I come back, that come back till today. He just said, I'm going. Ma, ma. He come by my nickname, Mama, hola, tomorrow now, or this evening. I said, he has not mentioned it to me. I even visited him in his house. Just said, I went to, sat down with him. Just said, this is true, but you can't get that money again from me. Except his hospital, this is hospitalization, which I see because he has told me he had broken legs. The next time I saw him, his legs were very fine. And it's not only me that got that kind of story. So he's destroying what you call intangible capital. This is why Christian character produces prosperity. Listen to me. If you live the Christian life, this one wants to get to. It is the life upon which 
the Judeo-Christian faith is what capitalism was built on. If you are not honest, look, there is somebody, this stage, somebody called me and said, they heard my message, wherever they heard that message, and it could be anywhere, that they need somebody who built, now the person who built the government stage is different from this person. And now, now, and I knew it was that person we were talking about because I, 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 I preached about him, how he troubled my soul. Alright, but eventually when I wanted to do something, I went to call him and all over. Even after we finished it, he's still doing what's up. There's still problem on it. So when we got here, I gave somebody else this one. Now, somebody has called me, called somebody to tell me that they need him to do the job. That job can be 30 million. But the trouble he gave me, I cannot introduce him to that person. It ain't possible. Because I know what I'm managing. And I've been doing this for years. I know that once he gets there and he sees a big company, he's going to, I know my man, he will multiply by four. And he will come back and say, Pastor, and if there's any trouble, they're going to shift it to my head. Yeah, you know how people are. They will even say they called you. They'll say, Pastor, but you was the one who introduced him. Next thing you just hear on television or on Twitter, Pastor, but you introduced somebody to us who you, so I can't. Now, you can be sorry for him, but I cannot. Because my name is more precious than money. So they found. Now I'm coming, they mentioned Nigeria here. We'll get there. The result of intangible capital, an efficient judicial system. Human capital was what they now saw. And the value of institutions constitutes the largest share of wealth in virtually all countries. Once one takes into account all the world's natural resources and, the, and that's natural capital and produced capital, 80%, which means those two constitute 20% of the capital, 80% of the wealth of rich countries and 60% of the wealth of poor countries is in intangible forms. The bottom line, rich countries are largely rich because of the skills of their population and the quality of institutions supporting economic activity. In other words, the first thing is the skills. That's why you can see them now. And you can say, well, you say to me, we have oil. And this is the mistake we make in Africa. We say Africa is the richest con continent in the world. Nonsense. We say that's where all the gold and that's where all the diamond and that's where all the oil. Uh, listen. The oil will have been black liquid disturbing farmers and fishermen if not for human capital. I hope you know that. If we were farming, oil would have been a nuisance. The value in the oil came from intelligence injected into it. This is why these countries are coming to Africa now. Not to transfer your land or anything, but to tap talent over there. Because they know the wealth is talent being transferred. That's what happened in Egypt. God judged, judged, judged. Pharaoh didn't hear. When he touched firstborn, that is the human capital of every family. Pharaoh said, we're in trouble. That's the day the civilization of Egypt ended. If we allow all the human capital to be transferred, this country will run into trouble. Oh. It will only be some people left with them. Oh, Lord, man, the rest, you know what <laughs> Are you following it? So, the bottom line is rich countries are largely rich because of the skills of their population, quality of institutions supporting economic activity. Here in Africa, we say it's a wealthy place. Now you go to a place like Switzerland, that is wealth, human capital. People that are capable of doing things that nobody else anywhere in the world can do. Skilled workers. They asked one CEO of an American company, said, why do you go to China? He said, it's not just because there's cheap labor. He said, those Chinese are the only ones that have this kind of skill now. These people are the only ones that know how to build certain things. We have to go there. Taiwan, where everybody used to laugh in the past, but they've developed their skill. They have the capital, so they attract all the resources into those places. Now, our problem is that our own focus is only on the seen, while their own focus is on the unseen, which is what the Bible says. So we've taken the Bible and we're reading it upside down. If we really know what wealth is, then the first thing you look out in any nation 
is the educational system. Because that's where you build the capital. The second thing you look out for is how much specialized vocational training is going on for skill, high skill acquisition. Those are the two. You enter into any country, you don't look at any other thing. Those are the two things you're looking at. All right? That's what you're looking for. Now, two major points came out of the report. And this is where they mentioned Nigeria. And this is what we need to understand. The report says that some countries are so lo- badly run that they actually have negative intangible capital. They are destroying the intangible capital, which means destroying it. And how is that happening? And they mentioned Nigeria as one of the nations. A system of rampant corruption, which means that if you are creating wealth from corruption and you have people that just have money out of corruption, how are you going to be telling anybody, be honest? How do you tell a child, be honest? Go to school, wait school, look at so and so. We don't know what we are destroying. All right? We'll say, look at this. Because there's money everywhere. There's this one, there's problem and all that. You know, they'll say, for what? Look at this person. And we have honored those people. We have put them on some pedestal. So what are they going to say? They're going to say, listen, we're not going to do it. So people are no longer looking at those things. Uh, you say, well, if you come out, you know, with good and you're intelligent and you have knowledge, they say, what are you saying? All right? So corruption and, and religious institutions have not helped here. I'm a pastor, I can say it. Because we also have created this prosperity message. Where people come to church and testify, and somebody testifies, no skill, no process, he had made $200 million, everybody says, amen, where did he get the 200 what work did he do? He stole the money, embezzled money, and, and he comes to testify, and they will come, and he now looks like magic. So even the Christian doesn't want to cultivate these qualities again, because he's seen that even the church, the bedrock of truth, has accepted... All right, and he's preaching this magic. So how can you say things? So a system rampant corruption, they said, and failing educational system, where the youth see no value in these intangible things, this ensures widespread poverty in future. Now the second is very important also. It is the power of these intangibles and what happens when they are not present. They found out that if all conditions for development other than physical capital are present, in other words, all these intangibles are present. Honest people, all right, hardworking people, attention to detail, continuous skill acquisition continuous education getting knowledge pleasant personalities respectful people kind but they they are thorough about the work that they do if all these conditions for development other than fiscal capital are present but these people don't have money they found out capital that is cash will soon be generated locally or will be made available from abroad And it is the truth that once these things are present, because there are some people in the world that their business, and they have gone to make promises to people that listen, give us money. We are money managers. Some of them have $150 billion in their portfolio and have told the people that we will give you back a 15% return at the end of the year. Now they are looking for where do we put our money in that we can get guaranteed return. If they feel that the judicial system in that place is such that if we put seven million into this place, the man keeps one million to pay the people and then takes six million to spend and doesn't do the work. When we come to court and say we're taking him to court, even the policeman will say we arrested him as he entered the cell. We don't know how he came out through the window at the back. He is gone because he has used part of the money to settle the whole system. So you are going to be running after, all right, somebody you are never going to fight. So they know that investing there is a waste. All right? But these things are available, it says, if these intangibles are in place. 
In other words, people make noise and say, well, you know, the problem is I don't have money for this. Nobody gives me. Some of those things are a reflection on probably what this individual may have, the way they may have been living their lives without real respect for other human beings. Respect for people that can help you. The truth about the matter is that this guy that did his stage may be worth 15 million in the next one week, but I am not going to do it. Because it could also mean, and most likely, that my own name is going to be damaged, and he, all right, will walk a bit. So I'm not going to do it. And I'm a Christian. And a pastor, I'm saying it on a pulpit, I ain't doing it. But I've stood up on my Instagram page and, and talked about my Baba because they chap and he told me, he said, I've never in my entire life seen advertisement work this way. He said, till 3 a.m. I was answering clients. He said, the clients that I got just by you posting it on Instagram that this is the person that cuts my hair. He said, Pastor, he said, somebody I'd not seen in 20 years, I used to cut his hair as a baby, came to my shop. He said, I've been looking for you. It was Pastor Kochu. A woman who was in the shop looked and said, are you not a Muslim? said, yes. And you are saying that guy is a pastor? Yes. You mean a pastor? I did it for a Muslim. I said, man said, it should look, said, did it. Because it's not whether Christian or Muslim is whether you are honest. Are you following what I'm saying? It's whether you are an honest person. Whether if you go there, if I told him, I said, this is the one that I've introduced you. Now I have to be calling him. He says, pastor, Thursday is the best time in the morning. My own schedule has now been disrupted because of your elevation now. But I'm okay with that. If, however, the conditions for development are not present, then aid will be necessarily unproductive. In other words, these unseen qualities are not in the lives of the people. Bring aid to those people. You are wasting your time. It's like pouring new wine into an old wine skin. Everything is going to be wasted. It's going to be terrible loss. You are giving, all right, precious, or you're casting pals before the swine and giving precious things to dogs. Thus, if the main springs for progress and development are present, material progress, they say, will occur even without external assistance. If they are absent, they will not occur with all the external assistance. Prove. So in closing, let me say the first thing about increasing production or productivity of labor here. We've talked about praying for favor and these things. Use your words right. Plant seeds into the garden of your life. Put the kingdom in. Those words are what is called in Luke 13, 21, the leaven that a woman puts into what she's baking. It's like a leaven which a woman took in three measures till it was leavened. In other words, it's the yeast. Words are unseen, capital. They are not tangible, but they carry weight. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Speak words consistently into what you are doing. But then, to eat, add these other things. Alright? Get the big picture early, speak to that. Pray for wisdom to make right decisions. Decisions you make in your career or business are critical. Ask for direction at every point. In other words, don't just go for what seems the most, you know, don't say, well, they're giving me a job in a place where they're going to pay me more. Doesn't necessarily mean you should go there. Ask for wisdom. God, is this the right thing to do? Decisions you make. All right? Not just what's convenient or what others are doing. Then seek knowledge. Build skill. Constantly increase that. Learn how to think. And what do we mean by thinking? How to use knowledge and next week I'll talk about this the type of worker that the world now is looking for alright are people that can use knowledge and there's a method to it to solve problems let me close with these two scriptures diligent alright Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4 it says yes, it says he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand but the hand of the diligent Explain what it means. Maketh rich. Now, what is he talking about when he says diligence here? Proverbs 12 and verse 24. 
Let me just show you what it means. And just paint a picture. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. But the slothful shall be under tribute. That word slothful means the lazy, you have to use, you have to force them to walk. In other words, people don't really want to walk you. They, they're lazy, which means you have to force them. Every time you have to drive them, you have to force them. You have to, they really don't. And let me tell you, many people don't want to walk. That's why all this, thank God, is Friday. It's very, it's very, it's very. All right? Monday morning, they'll say you're going to walk. You know, people come and meet. I, I, I mean, if you tell me that, I don't believe it. So let me just tell you. Before you send me messages, who say, Pastor, God, hey, you walk too hard, you walk too hard. I don't think I'm walking too hard. I don't. I don't at all. Because before you tell me I'm walking too hard, you have to first tell me the standard of work that gets results. If you don't know, don't tell me I'm walking too hard. Because what, what are you using to measure it? Tell me the standard, which means I'll tell you the type of people I'm, I'm, I'm going to be like. Then let's measure it how much work they do. Then if I'm doing too much than them, I'm walking too hard. But if everybody below them is ordinary, I don't want to be that. Don't let people pull you into ordinariness. Let me tell you this. My mother was the first person that came to meet me. We were doing four services. Somebody came to meet me in this church. I said, Pastor, four services. Hey, so I told them, I said, listen, listen, who came to me? I grew up under Bishop Oedepo. Five services he was doing for years. The day I told him with my mouth, uh, five services, and, you know, I want to cut it down. He said, you young man are cutting down five. You are a young man. So my mother said, first of all, I told her, I said, don't you lecture. You teach people medicine. He said, yes. My father was there. Okay, both of you lecture. I said, yes. Now, my own four services on Sunday. I said, yes. You do four lectures a day. And you do it four times a week. So on Monday, you spend about five hours lecturing. Tuesday, Wednesday. My own Sunday. She turned to my father. Ah, if you look at it that way, it's true now. It's not working too much now. I said, eh. Hey. What you people want is do one service, then take an Instagram photograph with orange juice. Uh, uh, laziness. Laziness. I'm mean, doing it again. Listen. <laughs> My wife was telling me, she told me, she said, so I said, you pray 5 a.m. every day, every day. It's too much every day. You are doing private prayer. Oh boy, if I don't do it, I'm on praying already. I just call people to my own prayer time. I got up yesterday at 11.38. And started praying from 12.15. When I, at 5 a.m., I switched on Instagram for other people to join me. Walk, you see, public is not the walk. What we are doing public is not the real walk. You'll be doing 15 centers. You are not, you, you, you are sleeping. Sleeping. You want to increase it to 40 centers, you are sleeping. See, is that way, man, slothful in his business. Weeds will begin to grow. So what is this thing? Verse 27. It says this. I mean, sure go. Uh, my husband said, he said, I, he said, and I understand what you're saying. That they bought a private jet. He said, the day the private jet came in, God, he said he hasn't left the country, told them. Maybe since 2018. He said, the day they got private jet, God told me, I'm not leaving this country until I tell you. Four years has gone. It's Nigeria. Doing what? Walking. The last time I went to see him, now I understood what he was saying. He said, they invited me to come and preach abroad. He said, we'll go there. How many people are we preaching to? We are preaching in America, big conference. 10,000 people. I can go to the market. Some got If I stand there, 20,000 people will gather. I'll preach to 20,000. I don't need to go anywhere to pray. To him, that's it. Oh. That you are going to say, well, where are you going to preach? The United States of America. Uh, um, um, I'll be in Philadelphia from there. I'm going to. His own is, how many people are you talking to? 500. Let's go outside and put a rose from there. 2,000 will come. We are doing more work than you going to America. Finish. And it's the truth. Except it's American souls are more valuable than some God that's all. All right. The slothful man. I said people want to enjoy life. Leave it. The slothful man roasted not that which he took hunting, but the substance of the diligent is precious. So what's the slothful man? He goes hunting but he brings it back, doesn't do anything with it. So let me give an example and close. You know, so, somebody's employed, and they say, what, what's, your, what's your work? Well, all we're telling you to do is arrange, we have a library in this office, arrange all the books properly every day, and make sure there are needs there. That's your job. And we'll pay you 100000 for this. Now, a slothful person, 
The boss will have to come quite a few times and books him somewhere. And they say, no, 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 I tried. You are not, you are not thinking about it. You don't know the problems I had when I came to this place. But I tried to arrange it. And they will say, that's a slothful person. You are using forced labor. You will soon be called a bad boss. Because you are forcing this person against their desire to work. But a diligent person will not just hunt, will roast what was hunted. So what's going to happen to this diligent person? Not only have they arranged the books, they look at the books. It's a library. So they take one book and start reading. After two months, they've been reading. The boss comes and says something. They answer the boss. The boss says, ah, where do you get all that knowledge? So well, when I arranged the book and there was nothing else to do, I said there's information in the book, so let me just start reading the information for myself. Then they read and they acquire information. The boss steps back and says, this is a different type of person now. This is a different person. You know what starts thinking about? How can we give this person more responsibility? Now, this other person said, well, the work they thought was just to arrange books. But a diligent person, you know, one of my staff, she sent me a message, she said, Pastor, I want to say thank you. I said, for what? She said, even though thinking about it, I told her later, I'll be want to run away. Because she said, I just rewrote my CV. I said, you wrote? <laughs> she said, and the things that you've allowed me to do in 18 months, this CV is impressive. I myself am impressed at the quality of work I've done here. Now, the reason is, you look at everybody and evaluate them. If we have to use energy to make you arrange the books, we can't be expending energy again on that. We just leave you with arranging books and pay you. But if you read what is in the book, then we'll say, come. Since you have read it, come. There are other things you can do here. That's how the diligent stands before kings and not before men. men. Is that initiative they bring to work that's why it takes devotion. That's what we're talking about. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. And by the power of your spirit, I ask you establish us in this truth. Expand it within our consciousness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God bless you all. All right, please, it may not be this week, but it may be, so let me just say it won't be this Sunday, it will be next Sunday, we're going to have to raise this building because of all the water coming from the ground floor. So not this next Sunday coming, they will still have one more service here, all right, so that next Sunday it will be announced where the Sunday the next, I, I'm think, thinking they have a breakfast meeting somewhere. All right, next Sunday, that's, now, let me say, the next Sunday is 25th. So we have service on the 25th, but the next one, which I think is August 1st, will not be here. On the 25th, it will be announced where the service will be, because this building, something has to happen, and we need about 14 days to do that, all right, to stop the water from coming in. So we need one Sunday away, and then from there we can now take over in reconstruction but something an emergency has to be done all right um there all right so please don't mishear me and say we didn't come to church next sunday because pastor was the one that said there's no church please oh, don't put me in trouble next sunday there is church here the sunday after the next sunday then is where we do the renovation all right then god bless you Let's put our hands together again and rise up on our feet to pray. I don't know how many of us have uh, gone through uh, the messages we've been hearing for the past few weeks and the conference. How many of us? Oh, okay. So we're going to pray this morning. There are two types of works, the internal work and the external work. And we're going to be praying 
that we will find grace we will see wisdom we will find the will we will develop the will and create space and time to sit down and do the internal work we are going to pray to God to help us find grace to sit down the Bible says which of you will want to build a tower but will not first sit down all the training all the teachings we have had points to the fact that nothing happens without a man sits down to think, to plan, to articulate to create a path for his life so I want us to open our mouth this morning and begin to pray to God and ask for grace ask for wisdom to see wisdom to sit down Nothing just happened in this life. Nothing just happened. Many people have failed the exams of life. Many people have failed financially. Many people have failed in their family lives because they refuse to sit down. There is a sitting down to be done. I want us to open our mouth and ask, God help me to create that time to sit down. I need to sit down and put things in perspective. I need to articulate. I need to put plan down. I need your help, Father. Two types of work. The internal and the external work. The physical work. The external work, the physical work without the internal work is awesome. Many people know how to hustle, but God does not want us to hustle. God wants us to step down, step out and walk diligently, walk definitely. I want us to pray this morning. Father, help me. Help me to find time, to create time to sit down. Many people run from pillar to post, they run from place to place. But nothing really happens because the real work is done behind the scene. The real work is done by finding time to sit down by finding time to think people do all night praying but what about all night thinking what about all night meditation many are running from pillar to post many are involved in all sorts of activities but nothing happens in their life because the real work is sitting down Bible says through desire a man having separated himself seeketh and intermediate with all wisdom there is the portion that we have to sit down to think through it is what you can produce from your mind that you will be called for The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Many people are struggling. Many people have failed because they will not sit. Many are resitting exams of life. Many are resitting. God doesn't want us to resit. I want you to open your mouth and ask. The things that we are hearing, they are not on the surface of the Bible. They are brought out by sitting down. They are brought out by thinking through. They are brought out by reading wide. They are brought out by burning the midnight hall. Many of us sleep too much. Many of us talk too much. Many of us go everywhere too much. There is no strength in any man without sitting down, without thinking through, without studying through. The Bible says, even so faith, if it, it at all works, is dead. Being alone, yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. The works of faith are the works of sitting down to meditate. This is what brings faith. This is what brings power. I want you to pray in the spirit and ask for grace. I've gone everywhere. I've walked everywhere. Father, help me. 
I have come to you, Father. Help me to find time, to create time to sit down. Enough of talking. It is time to go to work. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The substance is generated. It's not written on the surface. It is generated during a time of sitting up. During a time of thinking. During a time of meditating. During a time of planning. During a time of writing. During a time of speaking the word. This book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth. But thou shalt meditate during day and night. How much time do you give to meditation? How much time do you give to planning? How much time do you give to thinking? As a man thinking in his heart, so is he. Whatever we see is the quality of this, our thought life. I want you to pray to God, help me. I need to sit down. I need to sit down. I need to sit down. I need to learn how to sit consistently. I need to learn how to plan consistently. Help me, Father. Lembro sitte ke ligi ando gabosha. Ezugi ando gabra sha so sitte ke ligi ando gabra so sitte ke boja. Le parabo zanda galigi ando gabra sha so sitte ke ligi ando gabrosha. A lazy man is not the one that is not only working physically, is the one that refuses to do the mental work. Help me, Father. Lembri Haso Takayando. I've come to the halt this morning. Help me. I've come to the halt to meet my father. You will leave me at the hotel with my father this morning. Lembro zada galegi ando gabosha. Legi ado gabraza zende galegi brosha site ke bosha anza de galegi ado. I want you to pray. The work is spiritual before it becomes physical. Lembro ando gabosha site ke bosha. Lepro sote ke ke bosha site ke legi ando. The electric car that is produced now is the product of sitting down. The car we drive is the product of sitting down and thinking through. You have the spirit of God. What are you producing? Lembo shatoke boza. Father that I'll find grace. Grace to sit down. Lembra zoda gabo shasite kaligi ando. I ask for grace, my father. I ask for grace. Lema sote kabasha site ke ligriando gabosha. I need to think true. Honesty is part of it. I need to sit and combine. I have all the resources. For God has given me all the resources. Come, Father. I have come, Father. Father, I have come. I have presented myself. Help me, Lord. Help me to sin and build character. Nembro sata kabo shasita kadegriando. I have come that you will use me also, Father. There are things to be produced. Lord, I have come. It's time to sit down. It's time to learn how to do the internal work. There is the inner work. There is the inner work. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Brazo de Capocha, sit in the brush, sit in 
Father, we thank you this morning. We give you praise that we will not hustle throughout our lifetime. The internal work has to take place first. And we have asked for grace. We've asked for grace to see the wisdom to sit down, to find the will to separate ourselves and to find the time and create space to generate virtue, to generate activities that lead to great external works. Father, we heart for this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's put the confession after message we we'll run through this while we we'll prepare our tithes and offering. Yes, let's go. I declare this week the lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. My steps are ordered by the Lord. Every day I hope on my mouth while declaring the things I believe, calling into existence those things I see with my inner eyes as though they are, and God in return daily loads my life with benefits advancing my position. Morning by morning, he opens my ear to hear his voice and has positioned me by his instructions such that others call me fortunate, lucky, and blessed by what has occurred every day. I declare wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, I have gotten wisdom and without her understanding. I call wisdom my sister and understanding my closest friend. I have exalted wisdom and she has promoted me, making my life glorious. She has brought me to the place of honor because I have embraced her. I have listened to her and received her sayings, and so by the decisions I make, yes, I have added every day to my life. God has taught me in the way of wisdom. He has led me in right paths. When I go out this week, my steps do not end in dark, narrow passages, nor do I waste time making wrong turns. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, open our Bibles to Second Corinthians 9.8 while we prepare our tithes and offering. Yes, the Bible says, And God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessings come to me in abundance, so that I always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be, self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnish in abundance for every good work and charitable donations. Let's put our tithes and offering together. Let's just bless the name of the Lord. For people who are transferring, the account details will be put on the screen. And for people who are going to be uh, giving physical offering, the boxes are outside and the hushers will help us with some. Amen. So while we do that, uh, while we give our tithes and offering, I want us to welcome the first timers. If you're worshipping with us first Sunday morning, uh, uh, this morning we want to welcome you give you a special welcome I want you to raise up your hands if you are here for the first time we want to welcome you is there anyone you are welcome sir please can you you are welcome 
please can you take uh, a second step by standing up please yes you're welcome please warmly welcome them if you are just give them an elbow i know we are still observing all the covid protocols give them an elbow you're welcome this is the covenant nation lucky chapel pa- pastor just preached uh today you heard him and i know that you have been blessed and i want you to also get uh these teachings we just completed uh a conference refocus for conference and i believe you can get there is uh, we have this uh, free download you can also ask when you are taking out you can ask for that free download and i want to implore you to go through it read it uh, listen to those tapes and act if you act your life will never remain the same again you will walk on water before december i'm very sure and the quantum leaps will be falling in on every side you're welcome i want you to take the things you came to church with and you see uh that gentleman in white at the back there he has some information for you i want you to just go with him he's waiting for you let's put our hands together as they go welcome to church here are the announcements we would like to welcome all our special guests that is all those worshiping with us for the first time we are delighted to have you join us we believe you have been blessed and we hope you will be joining us again please take a moment to fill the card handed out to you and return to any of the ushers on your way out at the covenant nation we offer up corporate prayer worship and declarations daily join us online every morning at 5 a.m. via www.mixla.com/covenant and on instagram at pastor wadju join us as we build and release spiritual power in the place of prayer over the affairs of god's kingdom manifested in our lives Our midweek services at the Covenant Nation are a refreshing time of fellowship with God in worship and an in-depth study of his word. Join us online every Wednesday as we recharge and receive all that heaven has prepared for us. Time is 6:45 p.m. West African time via www.mixla.com/covenant and 7 p.m. on Instagram at Pastor Boju. The marriage enrichment classes are here again. The next round of virtual classes starts on Saturday, 24th July 2021. The TCN marriage enrichment classes are tailored for married couples who desire to enrich and strengthen their relationships. These classes provide biblical principles and guidance for a wholesome marriage. Discussions will be on topics such as money, sex, roles and responsibilities, conflict resolution, etc. The classes will surely enhance your family relationship goals as you refocus in this second half of 2021. To register, kindly go to bit.ly/tcnmeclasses. Note that registration closes on Wednesday, 21st of July 2021, and all classes will hold virtually. We look forward to having you in class. Have you downloaded the All in One Covenant Nation media app? With just a few clicks on the app, you can access thousands of past messages and special programs. View all your previous downloads no matter how many times you change your devices, provided you log in with your e-library account details. Create your custom prayer points and confessions list. Tune into the amazing lineup of programs on your favorite online radio, Covenant Radio. All this and many more features are packed into the new Covenant Nation media app. So, what are you waiting for? Download it now. Available Available on Google Play Store and iOS Apple Store as Covenant Nation Media. If you would like to get the audio CD of the message you just listened to or previous messages taught by Pastor Boju Oyemade at the Covenant Nation, kindly call or send a WhatsApp message to the media office on zero eight one four zero 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 two two four or visit www dot insightsforliving dot org forward slash cd hyphen orders to place an order. Audio CDs are produced on an order basis only. Also, MP3 formats are available for purchase at www.elibrary.insightsforliving.org. 
Remember to send your feedback to respond at covenantschristiancenter.org because at the Covenant Nation, we love feedback. Let us remain careful and responsible following all safety guidelines as recommended by the NCDC. For more information about upcoming Covenant Nation events, kindly visit the church website at www.insightsforliving.org or connect with us on all our social media handles at Covenant Sea Center and at Pastor Poju on Instagram and Twitter. God bless you and have a fulfilled week.